apparently Four Seasons is the new Olive Garden. Hey everybody, welcome to Mainly Movies. Today I'm going to be talking about the 2022 action comedy sequel, Sonic the Hedgehog 2. If you're new here, please consider subscribing for a variety of movie-related content like reviews, ranked lists, and trailer reactions. All my reviews include a breakdown of the pros and cons, my rating, and some tailored film recommendations, so be sure to watch through to the end of this video for all of that extra content. Sonic the Hedgehog 2 stars Ben Schwartz, Jim Carrey, and Idris Elba, and was directed by Jeff Fowler. It tells the story of Speedy Hedgehog, Sonic, voiced by Ben Schwartz, who must once again stop the evil Dr. Robotnik with the help of a new two-tailed friend. The first Sonic movie was such a surprise to me. Although I very occasionally played the Sonic games as a kid, I never had much of a connection to them or to the character. That, combined with some underwhelming trailers and the horrifying human teeth design drama, ensured that I went into the first film expecting very little. But to my surprise, I came out pretty entertained. It was far from a great movie, but it weirdly struck a chord with me, and I was looking forward to the inevitable sequel. And I wasn't the only one. I caught a Thursday afternoon preview screening, which, in my experience, usually ends up essentially being a private screening. But the theater was actually pretty packed with young hedgehog enthusiasts. And then, of course, me. This sequel takes the first film and makes everything bigger. The action, the comedy, the stakes, all reminiscent of the first movie, but much, much bigger. In fact, Sonic 2 maybe feels a bit overstuffed at points, and remarkably long, but it mostly works. The first film established the human characters, and the backstory behind Sonic's presence on Earth. With all of that foundation already taken care of, the sequel was able to draw more heavily upon the games themselves, not just referentially, but also for the actual plot. This is still a primarily Earth-based story, but it pulls in some pretty essential things from the games. Like I said before, I wasn't huge on the games. Really, I only used to play them when visiting my cousins. But there were two things even I knew about these games. You had to collect rings, and you had to collect emeralds. Well, the rings once again creatively factor into the story, just as they did in the first movie. But the Chaos Emeralds show up this time, too. And they're not the only recognizable things that show up. We've also got two very iconic characters spinning and smashing their way into the sequel. Yep, we've got Tails and Knuckles. And I gotta say, it's nice that Sonic has other animated characters to interact with this time. The buddy cop dynamic between Tom and Sonic was fun in the first movie, but the change here works a lot better for this particular adventure. Tails is a very sweet addition to the cast. He's helpful in the story, bringing skills and gadgets to the table, but he's also a big driver of the film's friendship themes and assertion that it's okay to be weird. I liked Tails a lot, but the standout for me was Knuckles. Intimidating, very powerful, but with an interesting, if extremely predictable, character arc. However, I did not expect him to be so funny. He's very serious and single-minded, so the combination of his literal interpretation of things and Idris Elba's deep, dramatic delivery was just a recipe for humor. That said, the humor of this film overall is a bit hit or miss again. It's fairly juvenile, maybe even more so than the first film, but I have to say, at least the kids at my screening didn't really seem to understand most of the jokes. Could also be that some of them just weren't all that funny. But there were plenty of decent jokes, and a lot of music and movie references, as well as some really bizarre moments. The weird, random moments that happened very quickly tended to work. A half-second joke involving a fish and another with a priest both got very big laughs out of the adults in my theater. But the moments and gags that dragged on all seemed to overstay their welcome pretty quickly. Jim Carrey is also back as the extremely over-the-top Dr. Robotnik. Just as in the first film, he'll really work for some people, but I've just never really liked his 90s shtick, so he's still mostly unfunny to me here. But I will say, he's toned down a little bit, and his pairing with Knuckles really improves things. 
Dr. Robotnik has a little less screen time this time around, but the other human characters are greatly reduced compared to the first film. The Donut Lord and everybody else are back, but it's definitely more of the Sonic Tails and Knuckles show. Which is probably a good thing, because the human-centric scenes strangely try to pull focus away from Sonic. An extended wedding sequence provides some entertaining moments, but just goes on for too long. It introduces its own human subplots out of the blue, and takes a very strange turn that wrecks the pacing of the film. The increased action helps us speed along, but this movie is weirdly long, clocking in at over two hours. Sonic 2 is one of those movies that I like more when reflecting back on the whole than I did at any point during the actual movie. And much like the first film, I think that's a big part of why I'm surprised by how much I enjoyed it. Alright, let's talk about the pros and cons. Pro number one is Knuckles. Much like with Sonic, I really had no pre-existing connection to this massively metacarpaled character. I vaguely remember him, but certainly not enough to drive any sort of natural draw to him in this movie. But I really enjoyed Knuckles here. He managed to be an intimidating and formidable antagonist, an interesting character, and an incredibly funny one. But unlike Sonic, he's not making jokes. In fact, he's really kind of the straight man of the film. He's a fish out of water character and takes everything very literally. But he's so serious and has the dramatic vocal performance from Idris Elba. So when he was put into these crazy scenarios or forced to interact with characters like Sonic or Robotnik, it was just massively entertaining to me. The second pro was the action. The first film had some good action sequences, but this one really kicks everything up to the next level. I was honestly surprised by how action-packed this is. I think it's in part a consequence of having more human-free scenes than the first movie. It's a lot easier to go crazy with a scene when it's just CGI animals and you don't have to worry about trying to fit a green screen actor into the mix. But whatever the reason, I was fairly impressed with the action. For the most part, it was fun, kept the story moving, and looked really good from a visual effects standpoint. On the con side, the biggest issue was the pacing. So this movie is over two hours long, which is a bit long for this kind of movie. They probably could have made it work with a more streamlined story, but unfortunately, the humans really mess with the pacing and elongate things here. Probably not a common opinion, but I think a lot of Robotnik's gags go on way longer than they should, and probably could have been cut a bit. But at least his storyline actually connects to Sonic. A lot of the scenes with the other human characters barely, if at all, connect to Sonic or the main plot of the film. There's a very extended wedding sequence where this is most apparent, and it bizarrely pulls focus in a way that temporarily grinds the film to a halt. Before I give you my rating and recommendations, I want to remind you that if you're interested in buying Sonic the Hedgehog 2 or any of the other films I mentioned today, I do have affiliate links for all of them in the description below. I get a small commission from anything you buy using one of my links, so I'd really appreciate it if you'd use them if you're in the market for any of these movies. I'm going to give Sonic the Hedgehog 2 three and a half out of five paws. Once again, I am surprising myself with the Sonic rating, but once again, I had a good time with this movie. It's a bit long, and the humor is inconsistent, but it's an action-packed Sonic adventure that brings in some fan favorites from the game. I would recommend Sonic the Hedgehog 2 to people who enjoyed the first Sonic movie. There's a bit more to the plot this time around, and we see the introduction of a few more characters, but it's quite similar to that first film. So if you liked that movie, you're bound to like this one too. I also think fans of the Sonic games will enjoy this movie, maybe even a bit more than its predecessor, thanks to the inclusion of a few more game mechanics as well as Tails and Knuckles. If you liked Sonic the Hedgehog 2, I would recommend Sonic the Hedgehog. Not only does that film establish the characters and the reason that Sonic's on Earth, but it also features similar humor and visual effects. If you're looking for another comedy-infused video game adaptation, you should check out Detective Pikachu. It too has a sarcastic animated character who interacts with both other animated characters as well as humans. And I've also got to recommend Hobbs and Shaw. 
might seem a bit weird, but that film also features Idris Elba as a super strong, serious character on a single-minded quest, plus Sonic once again makes reference to the Fast and Furious franchise here in this movie. Alright, a couple questions for you guys. Number one, have you seen Sonic the Hedgehog 2? If so, what'd you think of it? And number two, what's your favorite video game movie sequel? Be sure to leave your answers in the comments below so we can get a discussion going. Alright, so if you got some enjoyment, insight, or information out of this video, I'd appreciate it if you'd hit that like button. And if you haven't done so already, please hit subscribe if you're at it to see more videos like this. Till next time, this has been Alyssa with Mainly Movies. The way life should be.